Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. Now, a few videos back, I made a, a video where we looked at shift registers. Here's the front page of that video. And at the time, I'd included an additional circuit, which I said I would uh, come back to in a future video. And this is that future video. Now, I guess most of you understood what was going on. Um, but for those that didn't, uh, I needed a clean pulse into the clock input of that shift register and um, a little bit of investigation uh, proved fairly quickly that I wasn't getting a clean pulse. So that little bit of circuitry was about getting a clean pulse. So let's have a look at uh, when it worked and then let's have a look at when it didn't work and look at uh, why that was and how we got around the problem. Okay, here's the circuit from the previous video where we looked at the operation of a shift register, which is here. Yeah, and I've got eight LEDs that display the contents of the output latch, so they're currently all zero, i.e. switched off. And then I've got three buttons. This button is the clock, and that button is data, so unpressed is zero, pressed is one. And this uh, button here simply latches uh, the contents of the shift register into the output latch and allows them to stay there while you're shifting more bits into the shift register in the background, so to speak. Again, uh, refer to the previous video link up top um, if you want to uh, uh, understand the shift register but at the time I said we've got an additional chip here which I had to include to allow this to work properly and that's what I want to talk about uh, briefly uh, this time and I'm sure some of you have already worked out exactly what's going on here and why I needed that chip however let's just let's just show you things working hopefully how they should be so if I um, hold down the data button making the data one and latching let's say two bits of one like so and then I'll latch them into there you can see I've got two ones uh, and if I now uh, latch in a couple of zeros we should be able to move those along let's see what the latch does yep there you go it's moved two along if I now include another couple of highs and you can see we're moving along slowly, a couple more zeros. And if I just keep doing a single zero, you can see those last two bits are slowly moving along to the end. So if I make one high, there she is, low, 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 let's make another high, low, low. And you can see the bits uh, shifting across each time I latch them in. Now that is working correctly um, so there's nothing to see there so to speak but what I'm now going to do is I want to I wanted to film this because I'm now going to uh, rearrange that circuit uh, how it was in the first place before I included that chip and hopefully uh, you'll be able to see uh, what the problem was that I was able to solve okay so here's the original arrangement then without using the second chip and here we've got uh, push button switch uh, the clock input is this orange wire here it's been pulled low uh, unless I press the button and pressing the button uh, takes that input high and effectively simulates a clock pulse now these switches are pretty good uh, but not perfect so hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate the actual fault so um, first thing I'm going to do is set the data input to 1 and give one press on the clock and then let's latch that in and we should get the first LED lit which indeed we do let's try and advance that by one uh, blank LED in other words not pressed and we'll press one clock pulse and you can see it's jumped along two positions even though I only pressed it once now I'm just lucky there that that's happened um, rather quickly um, but that is the problem. The problem is that sometimes the chip sees more than one pulse from that switch. And that is that is the problem. Now, as I said, the switches are pretty good. So if I now latch in a, a 1 and a 0 and a 1 and a 0 and a 1 and a 0 and a 1, we should get alternate LEDs. Let's latch that across. Uh, and for the most part we have but you can see we've got two there where we got uh, while I'd got the uh, data set to one it latched in two pulses so the fault 
occurs intermittently but clearly it is uh, it is definitely wrong and we did not get that when we were using the uh, the second chip of the modified circuitry so one two three four five six should clear everything to there and it's actually emptied it and I only pressed it six times it's actually got more than eight pulses to empty that so uh, rather luckily for me whilst filming this uh, that's the fault which I needed to correct okay let's try and have a look uh, what's going on then which is uh, creating that problem um, and I suspect that many of you have probably already worked out exactly what it is um, now what we're looking for is a transition from low to high which is nice and quick and provides a very positive pulse for that uh, clock input for the shift register so here's a, a one-shot uh, scope grab of when the switch works well and most of the time it does work well but occasionally you get some noise and here's an example uh, of some noise now it may not look much but uh, bear in mind that's 100 nanoseconds between each division on there uh, and the shift register is uh, actually capable of working from DC up to 20 megahertz reliably uh, so it's more than uh, possible that the shift register has seen that right hand trace as two pulses particularly if the voltage has reached a point which that's sensed as logic one maybe it hasn't in that example but uh, by repeatedly making these measurements I, I was getting uh, traces like this but you get the general idea there are some much more idealized traces that you'll find uh, on the internet and I'm afraid I wasn't able to produce such a, a textbook example in my case but um, uh, hopefully you'll get the general idea so what we need to do is we need to get rid of that noise somehow and there's lots of ways to do it the way I chose to do it um, is uh, to, a de to do a debounce circuit so what we've got here and this is the original circuit is we've got a 10k pull down resistor which pulls that center line uh, to ground and when we momentarily press the push button it gives us a, a high logic level pulse which is what the clock is looking for and it should look something like that but as we've seen from the scope traces that isn't always the case so what can we do about that well what I did about it was this which is a fairly classic uh, hardware debounce circuit um, and I'll just talk you through how this works so what we've got now is we've got a in the case where the switch is just sitting there open the 100 nanofarad capacitor will charge through the two 10k resistors and once it's charged up it'll just sit there fully charged momentarily pressing the button uh, grounds that center point uh, sends a negative going uh, pulse into the uh, entrance into the input of the Schmidt trigger uh, but it also uh, shorts out the 100 nanofarad capacitor via the 10k resistor and that capacitor will discharge and that takes a great deal longer than the time that we're trying to get rid of in, in terms of noise so that uh, discharge cycle will actually mask the noise and that's uh, essentially how it works and I use this mit trigger uh, because it gives me a very positive going pulse now um, again you've probably uh, already worked this out but just for those who are a bit confused uh, I needed a positive going pulse so what I've had to do here because the Schmidt trigger is also an inverter that symbol there is for a not gate I've needed to take the input low and by taking the input low that will give me uh, the required uh, high pulse so that's the only reason for swapping around the uh, pull down for a, a pull up resistor so to speak implementing that on the breadboard then really nice and simple there's the circuit here's a uh, photograph of the uh, left hand side of the board there um, I'm making use of uh, one of the Schmidt triggers on the 40106 uh, it's just that top left hand one between pins 12 and 13 and you can hopefully see the blue 100 nano farad capacitor and then the two resistors with the uh, the switch that uh, pulls down to ground when pressed so that's the implementation of the circuit and it appears to have done the trick uh, and works rather well okay well that's it for our look at uh, my little debounce circuit and hopefully it's uh, been useful to some of you 
there's lots of ways to debounce uh, or to remove noise from from switching transients and I had a quick look around the internet and found loads and loads of circuits some of them a great deal more complex than the one that I used and a couple that are simpler too so I could probably have got away with uh, something simpler but uh, what I got was worked so I'm happy with the outcome now there are other ways to debound circuits quite a common um, thing to need to do and quite often the debouncing is also not just in hardware it can also be done in software and certainly a lot of the 8-bit micros that were around when I was uh, a lad uh, had uh, software debounce uh, built into the uh, algorithms that read the key presses and the keyboard input routines. If you want to have a look at an example of a debounce um, in software, if you've got the Arduino uh, integrated development environment installed, have a look in the digital example section and you'll find there is a, a sketch called debounce which um, hopefully talks you through in the comments uh, what's going on. So lots of ways to um, solve this problem, some, some hardware, some software, and uh, it's quite an interesting topic, uh, but clearly occurs uh, a lot. It's undoubtedly part of your, your mobile phone as well as your computer. So debounce circuits are everywhere. Hope that's been useful. If it has, uh, please click the thumbs up um, and like the video, that really helps me. It'd be great if you could subscribe and you'll get uh, hopefully notified then of, uh, of future videos, which uh, may be useful to you. If you're in the market for a multimeter, have a look at the uh, Kaiwitz ones. I've reviewed them on the channel. There's some links in the description. If you use the code, uh, you get a discount and that helps the channel a little bit too, which I will appreciate. Thanks very much for watching. See you on the next video.